Hello, hello, hello there, friends and family. Well, I can't see the thing on, but I've got a feeling we are live. And I just want to say hello and welcome. And hoping today finds you alive and well and full of faith. Amen. Oh, and what a beautiful day we've been having today. Excuse me, just that right temperature out there and just a little spotty rain from time to time just coming down and kind of giving you a little kiss there from heaven <laughs> that is, that's just a beautiful thing well we're here just trying to get things moved around in the new house and that it just uh it's amazing all this you, you just find out about yourself you know all the time hello stella little stella's going to come and visit maybe i don't know she wanted to come and smell my phone and see if it was a morsel of food I've left out. <laughs> she likes to catch me slipping. <laughs> and I and I slip often. Now, speaking of which, I want to make sure I don't slip on this one. I want to thank Brother Ron and Miss Brenda for bringing out some dinner for us. And we just get so busy, you don't have time to think of those little things like that. And we already whooped that dude down. That was awesome. It's good stuff. We just... Praise the Lord for you all, and and also the uh, the special dinner that we have the last Tuesday of the year, Best Years, I believe it's called, Best Years Lunch and Dinner. Um, oh, that was fantastic, and all the extra food that was there was came in just at the right time. <laughs> we made very good use of that, I promise you. So I just want to say hello and welcome to everybody that's joined us today, and and I hope uh, you guys are safe wherever you are. hope everybody's doing well. And here we are coming up to chapter 7 today. Also, I want to say happy birthday to any birthday people out there. Uh, the Lord's showing how every year how awesome you are, right? By giving you one more year to, to go around there. Oh, praise the Lord for you. And here we are at chapter 7 as Jesus is still at the Mount of Olives teaching us all the way that we should be. It's just the most blessed thing to be able to sit at his feet and allow him to prepare us and make us right and to cleanse us with his word. So in light of that, let's go ahead and say a prayer real quick. And if you're driving, be sure not to close your eyes. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, thanks for every opportunity that we get to come before you, to dig into your word, and just to do one more thing with you, to love each other, and to just praise you. We pray that you get all the glory, and we also pray, Lord, that you open our heart and mind and help us to understand your word. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Be our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Matthew chapter 7. Well, right away, he says, Judge not, that you be not judged. Oh, so much can be. <laughs> well, I can see that one up there. Thank you, Sylvania Church. That's a good one. Brother, brother Forrest. Forrest Gump. I kind of like that one. Oop, that's my, you might be late on it. I forgot to dismiss it. Excuse me just a minute. We're going to shut that off because it'll make us crazy. Judge not, that you be not judged. Oh, that's excellent. And so challenging to do, right? And especially the more we're learning about the Word of God. <laughs> uh, are you seeing, I don't know if you were able to see all the stuff that Savannah's Church is putting up. That's, that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> that's good stuff. Judge not that you be not judged. And it's so easy to do. Oh, my goodness. Especially when we're learning the right way go and then things to say and how we are to live it's so easy to become judgmental and we just have to uh, remember the knowledge that we're gaining in the Lord it's not so we can go and judge our brother and begin to pick out his faults or anything like that it's so we don't know how to pray for him it's so we can uh, enter into intercessory prayer for him it's so we can lead him properly in the way and bring in a proper and sound counsel from the Word of God. Not in judgment, but just understanding that, you know, if I'm uh, doing something and putting something together incorrectly, somebody that's experienced 
you know, maybe I'm working on my car and I'm trying to use a screwdriver to put my tires on. Well, right away, they're going to understand, oh, oh, you don't want to do that. You want to use this. And then they'll bring to you the proper tool to, to get your tires off and tires back on. That's kind of the same essence. Once we have learned and understood something, then we'll know better how to help each other. So it's not that we can berate people or put people down or, or anything like that or be judgmental toward each other. It's just so we can know how to help each other along and point each other to the right way and the right path. Amen. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged also. So whatever, remember, whatever we, we sow, we're going to reap. You will be judged by the same. And with what measure you meet, it will be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in the brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye, that little speck that's in your brother's eye, but yet we have this large plank in our own eye? Oh, how, or how wilt thou say, thy brother, let me pull out that mote from thine own eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. Thou hypocrite, first Cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, and neither cast ye. Well, verse 6 goes on to a little different place. So let's kind of cover 3 through 5 there real quick. He's talking about um, how is it that we can could try to get that little speck out of our brother's eye and deal with that little problem when well, we got such a big problem in our own with our own life and things like that he says first dig that problem out of your own eye then you can see the speck out of your brother's eye just talking about dealing with sin in our own life and the the function and all of the things that are going on with God and with ourselves it is always personal we start in a personal place with that once we have finally brought everything to the table with God, then again, we can see how to help our brethren, how to help them come to the right place with the Lord, not to judge them according to that, but how to help them to grow in Him. And ultimately, we <clears throat> had some neighbors before. They were obviously in the world, and they would often say things that would be evidence of that and we would hear that from time to time and we would see the things that was going on and it was obviously things that were against God so we would go in the house and, and consider things like that you know and look for the opportunity always praying for an opportunity to be able to talk to them and, and to share the gospel with them but Sometimes in the moments when, when folks are in, you know, in a crazy party or things like that going on, it's probably not a good time. Fine, just pray for the right time to come and talk to them about the ways of the Lord. But also, as we go in the house, we'd, we'd notice those things and talk about it a little bit with each other. And me, I noticed in some of the things she goes, well, I remember when I used to be do things like that. And I said, yeah, me too. And right away, the sin will be evident right out there, right? And I said, you know, their sin is blatant, and it's right out there against God, drunkenness and things that was going on. And I said, but you got to ask yourself, are their sins any greater than my own? Because every day we sin against the Lord some way or somehow, even if we're doing it un unwillingly, not knowing that we're doing our transgression. That's a transgression. And that's what the word is for. We come to the Lord to uh, listen to him and allow him to change our heart, turn our heart from something, or to show us something that may be against him, but we don't even realize. So that's why he says, unless you allow me to wash your feet, you have no part with me. Well, this is him washing our feet, us getting into the word. Well, anyway, I said, are there sins any greater than our own? Is one sin... If, if we fail in one area in the law, then we've, we've failed in all of them. And the law is just to show us if we're in sin. It's for the sinner, right? not for the righteous. Who are righteous? Those who are in Christ. Ooh, I smell coffee. 
Oh my goodness, is that coffee? Oh my, you want to get on TV? <laughs> no, my my sweet me, I'm going to say hello and thank you. We've been working so hard, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. It's been, we've run to the to the pool. Any coffee out there? Salute. This is my, my last vice. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. That's the Peruvian coffee. If you guys ever get a chance to try it, it's good. It's so good. We might have to do a Peruvian ad or something. Never know. This might be out. We just made millions just now. This is a real commercial happening. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Oh, that was good. Okay. So, as we were talking, we said, hey, is this sin any greater than our own? Well, no, not really. So, first we have to deal with ourselves. And then we can go and always be a little more clear about how to come to the fullness of God. That's what it's all about and so necessary. Now, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast you your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. There's a time and place uh, to bring the word of the Lord. And as you go out there and as you're sharing the gospel and the truth of the word, um, I am Sonic. Good to see you. Hello, Joanne. Uh, hello, Miss Michelle. Good to see you guys. As we're going out there and sharing the gospel, you'll recognize when the right time and not and when it's not the right time. <laughs> but sometimes I encourage everybody, and this is something that we want to do in the future too. I want to just put this out there. Uh, we're going to. We've been looking to uh, not only improve our signs in the area, but also to get some business cards slash, um, what are they called? Tracks, gospel tracks. So on one side, it'll, it'll talk about the church and it'll be an invitation. Hey, come and visit us and we're going to hand them out all the time. We want to encourage our congregation and everybody to just buy them for us because it's also going to be a uh, use for fundraisers to help us to continue and everything that we need to do. So buy them because on the other side, they will have that good old million dollar question. You may be in a situation that though it doesn't always allow to talk about the Lord, but you can still be fruitful. And unless we're being fruitful, we saw by his word, those, that tree that is not fruitful will be hewn down and cast into the fire. What does it mean to be fruitful? <laughs> There's all kind of stuff there we could talk about, but this is just one more way we can use to be fruitful. And we should never, if, we, if we're a believer in the Lord, and if we truly believe his word, and his word says it is appointed once unto man to die, and then the judgment, we should know that that word is true. And if we really truly believe that, we'll be screaming down the street saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <laughs> but I don't encourage anybody to do that, really. I think there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. But just to approach people and as, you know, as like we're normal. <laughs> we're peculiar people. The Lord's called us to be peculiar people, but we also got to approach them normally, you know. And first, we approach them in according to the way of the world. And if we say, hello, how are you? And then uh, all of a sudden, just take an opportunity just to give them a gift. Give them a track. Hey, we want to invite you to church. This is where we are. We're going to hand that out. And then on the other side, has a million dollar question. What will happen if you don't make it home tonight? Will you be able to stand before the Lord when you go to heaven? Well, little thing like that is a way that we can be fruitful and a way that we can share the gospel when it's not necessarily an opportune time. Also, um, it can, it, you know, it can be seen. It takes a while to read that, so it gives you some escape time. <laughs> if you don't really want to talk about it, I have some that tell a story. You know, for it, you have to go through the story, and it's like a, a test, a little. It's a like a magic trick, in one essence, not necessarily a magic trick. It's a an illusion, and they're curved cards. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're both curved the same way. But one will look a little bigger than another. And then when you change sides, it happens again. And 
if just look at it for a second, I'll bring it up and it's a red card and blue card and I'll say, hey, which one is larger? Which one do you think is bigger? And they'll pick the one that obviously looks bigger. And then you trade sides and I said, now which one? And they have to choose the other one. It's funny because it's just the way the curve is. And But that optical illusion um, just gives you an intro, a way to talk. And then also, it's you give it to them. Hey, this is neat. Try this on your friends. But on the back, it has a story. And that story it takes them a while to get through it. And you say, here you go. Keep that. You know, and be sure to read the message on the back. I think you're going to like it. And then you get to take off, you know. But that way, you still keep being fruitful. And they're so cool, people will still keep them, even if they agree with the message or not. Okay, saying that, we don't throw our pearls before the swine. <laughs> and sometimes it's it's good to talk, and sometimes it's not. Um, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Oh, it's one of our favorite places in all the Bible, right? Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. You're sitting here thinking about that, and God is so faithful. He's so faithful. Here we are, my wife and I, one day, putting out a prayer, and the very next day, seeing the impossible happen. And I don't know if I'm allowed to tell a story right now, so I won't. But I'm, I will say it like this. We put out a prayer for help. And then out of nowhere, help comes. Nobody knowing that we would, that we needed help with anything. This, you know, just a little while back. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the very thing we need gets met. Every time I consider that, it just blows my mind how quickly God answers prayer continually. He loves you guys. He loves us so much. It's so incredible to watch how he continues to care for his own. And he still continues to care for all, every living thing. As he says, behold, watch as I open my hand. And provide the needs for every living thing. <laughs> it's a precious thing to be a part of that. And it's another good reason to be tucked in tight with him. Especially days like these. Now he that for everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks it shall be opened. Praise the Lord. Or what man is there of you whom... If his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? That's just worldly people. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, what? Well, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? As long as we are living our life without considering the ways of God, we are counted with the wicked. Think about that. And he says, if you then being evil, just um, those that aren't considering the ways of God, and if you, even you, would give to your children in that way, how much more then should the Lord give to them that ask? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Whatever you want, however you want to be treated, treat others the same. For this is the law and the prophets, and this is the fulfilling of all the law. We love our neighbor as ourselves and love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. There's nothing left to be sent against us. Well, we can only do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Even enter into, enter you in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
and many there be which go in that way, the broad way. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Remember this, few be they that find that narrow path. But many will fall, find the broad way. What is that broad way? What's the difference, the broad and narrow way? There is a way that seems right unto men, but the end thereof leads to destruction. And that way is obviously the broad way. Enter you into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in that way. If I say, come this way, come to the Lord for a better life, this is the broad way. That's broad way preaching. As talked about before in some of the other other times that we have spoken, that you know it's it's so broad that they even make a song about it, you know, and and, and New York established on it. <laughs> oh man! But narrow is the way, and few be they that find that. You know what that word narrow is? If you break that word down, it works out the way of affliction. It is by the way of affliction. This is the way. It is the way to come to the Father in repentance and ask Him for forgiveness and then turning from all things that are against Him. That's the affliction. For he who ceases from sin suffers in the flesh. And all that name the name of Jesus must cease from sin, must turn away from all those things, even the little ones. And we have to pray continually, Lord, put a right heart and spirit in me. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Oh, I try with all my heart to shine a bright light on that gate. That's the place that I, I want with all my heart to lead people to that narrow way. He is Here is the door. Jesus is the door. There is no other way. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, hungry wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. What fruit is that? Love, joy, gentleness, meekness, patience, kindness, temperance, long-suffering, self-control. There's a couple more in there. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's serious. Man, that is so serious. We have to take these words serious. I, to be hewn down is to be stopped in the... You know, it, this tree is growing and living. But at some point in time, we do decide to maybe harvest a tree to take it down. Or if we see it's good for nothing, then we decide to take it out and put something that is good there in its place. And the Father is the one who makes those decisions. But even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you will know them. I want to tell you what, they may seem like, and I, I've seen many who will mislead, who won't turn to the truth. And they may seem to be profiting they may even seem to have a great following, but God knows everything that they're doing, and He and they think that they're that God is maybe with them because they don't know the Lord, and they don't know the way of the Lord. But they're being used by the enemy. If we're coming in and bringing false doctrine, we're being used by the enemy, and we are misleading many. Well, the Lord says, "Woe unto you who cause even the least of these to stumble." Better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the sea. That sounds pretty harsh, right? He takes this very seriously, and he's watching everything that we do, every word that we speak, everything that we're teaching each other or others or, those, or even the young ones 
or old one, just those that don't know better, all the things that we're teaching. God is keeping record of everything that we're doing and that you're doing. And I would hope to advise each and every person to be very careful about the things that we're teaching. Make sure it is sound doctrine. There's only one way it can be, is to line it all up with the Word of God. Wherefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now know this, this is one of the most important verses in all the Bible. Matthew 7, 21. Know this one, okay? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me, and go on, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? That's a work that we do in ministry. And in thy name have cast out devils. We definitely do that in ministry. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Oh yeah, you see that in every kind of church. And then will I profess to them, says the Lord, and this is in red letters. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. What is, What does it mean to work iniquity? It is willful sin, premeditated, things that we ponder on, things that we know is sin against us, but yet we do it anyway. This is sin, and it's sin against you if you know it's sin. Ye that work iniquity intentionally, therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise person which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. <laughs> Love it. And every one that hears these sayings of mine, and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Oh, it makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? To come to that right place, coming to the Lord in righteousness and truth, taking Him as He is and going His way, going according to as He teaches. This is the proper place to be, the proper proper way to live. It's the only right way to live. Not because I say so, but because right here the Lord is saying so. Right here. And you can see it for yourself. And when the trials of life come, and they will come on the righteous and the unrighteous, they will call, come upon the those that follow in the Lord and those that are not. Each and every person will go through the same kind of troubles. When the storms come in the through everyday life, the storms come, and we all, all of our neighborhood goes through the same kind of storm. And we all have to sit and then... Will that test come and show us whether we are able to stand, whether our house is able to stand or not? And I pray that you guys, and I trust that you all are in the right place. And if you're not, you're going that way. I pray you will go that way quickly. Turn away from everything that is against the Lord. A liar or a thief or adulterer or fornicator, none of these shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Um, none that hate the brother. And that's even murder in our heart. And the fornication is sexual activity out of marriage and adultery. No homosexual. All of these are standing in defiance against God. If you recognize that this is something that aligns with you and your life, know that the Word is showing you you're in danger of judgment and that it's time to turn. See, I had to dig that speck out of my eye. I had to recognize that trouble in my life. I had to recognize in myself that I was far away from God. And still I'm challenged every day. But I, I come and, and align my life with the Word of God and see if I'm okay according to that. And then I try with all my heart and by the Spirit of God to walk in Him. And I pray that you all will too. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, 
the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one, having authority, and not as the scribes. Amen. That was what is called or known to be um, the Sermon on the Mount. One of the most awesome sermons ever, ever penned by anybody. And the prince of preachers, can't even, he's the, the king of preachers, no doubt. And the prince of preachers couldn't even touch him. Um, hey, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I know that a lot of these words, you know, they, they constantly can dig at our heart and dig at our conscience. And I pray that they do, honestly, because that's the place that we find out that where God is. He's right there in our conscience, in our heart. This is where the Holy Spirit meets us. And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in any part of your life or anything that's going on, I pray you'll just say that prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And put a right heart and spirit in me because I believe that you sent your son to take my sin on the cross. That doesn't mean that you get to go on living in your sins because Jesus did and you're believing it. No, he says those that name the name of Christ, if you're trusting in him, have to turn away from them. And when he came and healed all those who were hurt, the leper, the blind man, the one that was caught in adultery, that was judgment was about to fall, after he came and blessed them all, he said, go and sin no more. And that's exactly what he's telling us today, too. Remember this, okay? Once you hear this, then you know it. And now today, the gospel has been made plain in your hearing. <laughs> I pray you'll take it and do a lot of good with it in the name of Jesus. And just chase the Father with all your heart. Hey, you guys throw some likes up there if you don't mind. And some hearts or something. And please share um, every time this word gets out, also pray for me. We're going to go meet with the with the uh, radio man tomorrow and see if we can't get on the air on the radio. They're going to show me how it's really done, and uh, oh, it's all this playing that we're doing here online. <laughs> they get that stuff out of here. I want to show you how to do it, how the big boys do it. Um, is it we're just doing a little thirty minute, thirty second segments at first. If this goes well, we may vamp it up to two-minute timeouts and, and throw those in, which is going to be a lot of fun. So I need your prayers, okay? I need your prayers, and we need your prayers on this, uh, the live outreach on all of our social media. We're changing all of that. We're trying to improve in every, every position that we're in. And, oh, boy, pray that we can get moved in, and <laughs> we are definitely covered up. There's no doubt about it. I'm about to fall out. <laughs> I was like, good morning. Boo. And I just fall over <laughs> before I even had a cup of coffee. Maria's over there shaking her head. Yeah, this is intense. This is intense. And if it wasn't for the family coming and helping us out and saving us, our heroes. My goodness, the Lord again showing up. And they were smiling the whole time. I don't think I was. I think I was, oh, back was killing me. I was exhausted and oh my goodness you know but uh you want to do that with a loving heart the best you can and i had to tell him the next day hey if i was grumpy at any at all please forgive me and please forgive me i'm not walking around sometime here we was just up all night and and then the next morning we're doing church service and then going through all that good stuff you know so there's a lot happening and it's all good. It's all good. But it can wear you down. That's the truth. So I need all the prayers I can get. And again, thank you all for listening. Thanks for your time. God bless you all. He bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. And above all else, love each other and trust in Jesus. Amen. We'll see you later. Let me turn this thing on here.